last week we had um, five DNA samples and a sample from the crime scene, because we were in the crime scene lab. So what we did was we pipetted all of the different DNAs into their respective tubes. And then we added a uh, restricting enzyme, so they will cut up the DNA, and then we'll be able to match the correct suspect to the crime scene. If you look at your samples, they were in the fridge, they're clear. You can't load them in this well and see what you're doing. So we have to get them to a point that you can visualize them. So I have here, this is loading dye. And loading dye, as you can see, is dark blue. It's actually composed of two dyes, methylene blue and cyano blue. And these are very small molecular masses. So what happens is they will migrate ahead of all of your DNA samples. So you can not only see your DNA that you're loading, but they will also migrate ahead of the sample so you can monitor how your experiment is progressing. The first well is going to be the latter. That's the one I'm going to load. This is our control. This is a DNA sample that's already been cut up into many pieces. In lane two, you'll put your crime scene sample, CS. And then in lanes three, four, five, six, and seven, so lane eight will stay open. You will load your suspects. So what's happening right now is the buffer, it's a salt buffer. And so it's really becoming deionized or disassociated. There's a disassociation going on right now in the buffer with the electricity. You should now start to see your samples moving out of the well. So after the 20 minutes, what we will do is we will um, disconnect the power supply. We will open these boxes. We will pull the gel box out. And we will slide the gels into a tray. We're going to stain overnight. So we'll flood the agarose gel with the stain. And then we're going to put it on a shaking platform. Because the more the liquid, the, the dye, moves over the agarose, it will eventually attach to your reflips, your little DNA pieces. So that tomorrow, we can then pour off the excess dye, and your agarose reflips will all be stained. So suspects threes DNA is the same as the crime scene DNA, correct? Yes. Okay, so you're the forensic scientist. You pick up the phone, you call the police, the detective who's investigating this crime. What does the detective arrest this person for? Let's say it was a murder. What does suspect three get arrested for? Period. Exactly. You cannot arrest them for murder. You cannot bring them up on charges of murder. What do you need to do in order to do that? You've got to find a lot more evidence so that the preponderance of the evidence, right, creates no doubt in a person's mind. That's what, the, that's what this is for. But this is strong evidence, isn't it? But all it can do is link the suspect to the crime scene. They could come back at this point and say, yeah, I was at the crime scene. I came across the body. I touched the body to see if it was alive or not. Sorry I did that. And that's all you can arrest them for. So you've got to find more evidence. You've got to find motive. You've got to find a lot of other things. But this is strong evidence. Is there anybody else that would have that suspect's DNA? Twin. An identical twin. Exactly. The chances are like one in three billion or whatever that there would be two people with the same DNA.